we are back here at Campanelli Stadium in the beautiful Brockton, Massachusetts for leg two of the doubleheader today on July 31st between the Brockton Rocks and the Seacoast Mavericks. The first game was a slaughter by Brockton beating the Mavericks 18 to four and out hitting them 19 to eight. Do you see more or less of that in this game, Rob? You know, you could also see more of the same. Um, today, here's the Mavericks look to have no energy in the first game and sometimes that doesn't transfer over well to the second game. One player that had an exceptional game in the first leg was Kyle Ruth, who had a home run, a triple, a double, was also hit by a pitch. And we don't normally see a lot of power from Ruth, but he had a, had a tremendous game, including hitting the ball out of the yard. He's at the second baseman again in the second game here. He has, and uh, he had a really good game. Uh, this afternoon, he's probably the rock star of the game for the first game, and then we'll have to see who the rock star of the second game is today. That's Mike Formella. Yeah, I don't uh, know who the star is, but the starting pitcher will be Mike Formella, the right-hander from Concordia U University. Goes to, I, sh I should say, grew up in Glen, Illinois. Same state as Joe Silva. Yes. Several other players on this Rocks team. Tommy O'Hara as well. Zach Martin as well grew up in Illinois. Zach Martin, unfortunately, no longer with the Rocks. Yeah. As is Tremaine Spears, and this will be the final game for Aldrich DeJong, another player who will be leaving. <laughs> Unfortunate, as those are three of the better players of this Rocks team who are in first place in the league up to this point, and they could use them going forward. They sure could. This game about to be underway. Go through the Brockton Rocks field here. Mike Formella starting. Nick Garland is his battery mate behind the plate. Wyatt Olson at first base. Kyle Ruth at second. Kyle Simon over at third base today. Jake Rosen at shortstop. Kyle Peterson at left. Aldrich DeJong in center. And Joe Silva playing right field. The leadoff man for Seacoast is Jose Negron. Formella trying to have a 1-2-3 inning for the Rocks here is Matthew Bickford had a big day today. Brown was 0 for 2 in the first game. Popped up to second, struck out, also walked. The first pitch of the game is fouled off towards the picnic area out of play in left field for strike one. And we are underway here in the second leg. Here's the 0-1, curveball outside for ball one. We haven't seen a lot of Formella so far this we year. Have of course, not. he's somewhat new. Somewhat new, and uh, he definitely could help the Rocks here in their late playoff run. The 1-1 is chipped towards the right side of the infield. Wide Olsen picks it up and taps on the first base bag for the first out of the inning here in the top of the first. And you know, those plays to first base aren't always the easiest place to make there. Wyatt Olsen made it very easy there for the first out. That he did. <laughs> we saw him have to bend over and get the ball before it bounced again. You can see in the replay there, took a couple of bounces there. Gets it, steps on first. New batter Boudry hits that to second base, fielded by Kyle Ruth, and he throws it over to Olsen at first base for the second out of the inning. Nice job there by Kyle Ruth, an easy play there at second base. Makes it look easy there for the second out. That'll bring up Michael Goodrich, one of the, the lone, one of the lone good, good games, I should say, in, in the uh, first leg. As he watches ball one upstairs for the first pitch. Goodrich was three for three, had three base hits, was also hit by a pitch, so reached base four times, didn't score. The 1 0 is swung on in, missed for strike one. You'll see a 1 1 count now with two men down. 0 to 0 ball game at the top of the first oh, inning. Formello's trying to make quick work here in the first inning. There's the 1 1. That'll be outside and low for ball two from Formella. Batter Goodrich. Goes to Trinity. Comes from Gilbert, Arizona.
Two balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. That one's chipped back into the protective netting. Also, almost made its way over the net. It did, almost did. That could have been a chance for a ball there, Ben. <laughs> so we have not had a chance yet this season. That'll be strike number two. Two balls, two strikes, two men out. Nobody on base. Here's the 2-2 from Formella, and that one's hit towards left field. That one will drop. And Goodrich has another single on this Monday afternoon. Now four on the day, one for one in the second game. They'll bring up Paul Salado as we look at the instant replay here. Fastball outside of the plate, but Goodrich pulls that one to left field as it two hops the left fielder, Kyle Peterson. Good piece of hitting there. You know, here for For the Rocks here, just trying to get out of the first inning without letting up any runs here with that two out single. First pitch to Salada on the outside edge for strike one. No balls, one strike, two outs. Goodrich is the runner on first base. The 0 1. That one's hit towards left field. Peterson going back, he's turning, and that one is gone into the bullpen in left field. Paul Salada with a two run blast here with two outs and Goodrich didn't know that that was a home run. He saw him sprinting around second base. Got confused as he didn't see a sign from the third base coach as to whether he should hold up or head home. But that is a home run and both runs score there as we look at the instant replay here. The pitch is on the outside and Salada does what the pitch allowed him to do. Outside pitch sends it to opposite field into the bullpen. Tough inning here for Amelia. Gets two quick outs here. Feeling pretty good about himself. So you now uh, the first pitch in there for strike one to Hirschbaum. Unfortunately, allows that two-run shot here now that puts him down two nothing early in this game. Yo, one a slider low for ball one. One ball, one strike, two outs. The one one in there on the outside edge for strike two. For Mike Formella. Here's the one two. They'll be outside for ball two. And Seacoast off to a much better start in game much two than they did start. in game one. They got down four nothing early or five nothing early? Five nothing in the first. That one is a check swing fouled off towards the Seacoast dugout. Seacoast had two runs until the last inning when they were able to add two in the top of the seventh, of course. This game will be shortened because it is a double header. It'll only be seven innings, just like the first leg was. Here's the 2 2. That one's hit towards right field, and that one will drop as well. Hirschbaum in with a two out single. And after the Mavericks' first batters up went down 1-2, they got a single, a home run, and a, another single. More formula here, just has to settle down and get back to the way he wants to pitch here. Um, that two-run shot there really flustered him out on the mound, and you can tell. So we see the replay here. Outside fastball taken opposite way, and the Mavericks doing a good job hitting here in the first inning is the first pitch to Santos in there for strike one in the bottom half of the strike zone. No balls, one strike, two outs. Two nothing lead for Seacoast here in the top of the first inning. Oh, one change up in there for strike two. Santos will see an 0-2 count. Here's the pitch. That one's hit towards left field. It'll get through the infield. And another base hit for the Mavericks. If you watch the replay here. It just slaps it in between third and short. Nothing Simon or Rosen could do about that. And Nick Garland, the catcher, Head out to the mound is Andy Terry, to the pitching coach. 
Seeing what's up with Formella here in the first. Mike Formella here. Once again, I'll say it. Just really has to settle down and just get back to what he wants to pitch. He's had a really rough outing so far here in the first inning. He has to get out of this with only letting up two runs here to give his chance the team to tie the game in the first. As you know, this is a seven inning game, so this isn't like a ninth inning game where you have a lot of time. And I have no scientific data to support this claim, but I feel like in double headers, when a team wins by a large margin as the Rocks did winning 18 to four in the first game, the, the winning team in the first game is often the one that starts out lazier in the second game, and sometimes the other team can take advantage of that. As we see already, Seacoast up to an early 2-0 lead, threatening to score again here in the first inning. Rudy Baez, the catcher, up to bat now. Two outs, runners on first and second base. Here's the pitch from Formella, and that one slapped foul on the first baseline, hitting the fence. Foul territory in right field. That'll be strike one. <laughs> no balls, one strike, two outs. Formella looks back at Hirschbaum in second base who scampers back to the bag. No one was covering. Formella just didn't like the lead that Hirschbaum had and now we'll see Ruth edging over. The 0 one is tapped towards Wyatt Olson. He'll scoop it up and head on over to first base, and that'll be the third and final out here in the top of the first inning, but not before the Seacoast Mavericks add two on a Paul Salata two-run blast to left field. Seacoast now up 2-0 to zero after the top of the first. Brockton Rock's first ups coming back after this. We're going to toss it to Matt Nelson. On the field, Matt. Smith County District Attorney Tim Cruz. Tim, a busy time of year, but we're out at Campanella Stadium for an important cause, Night Out for Recovery. Talk about the opioid problem in Plymouth County. Well, the opioid problem is very similar in Plymouth County as it is everywhere. It's a significant problem that needs to be worked on by everybody in our community. And I think that we're doing that in a variety of different agencies working together, trying to get in front of this terrible problem. You guys just moved uh, your offices to what I consider the heart of the problem, downtown Brockton, the homeless shelters right there. Talk about what that um, influx of state troopers to that area is going to do to help this problem in Brockton. Yeah, I thought it was important to have more and more resources located in the center of Brockton. And as most people probably know, there are 25 troopers who work for the Plymouth DA's office who normally were assigned to the Middleborough Barracks. But now they're with us here in Brockton. And I think that visibility, that presence, and being right here in the city really gets them even more involved than what they already were. So I think it's a really positive thing. No, I think that's it. You're doing great. Back up to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Back here now for the bottom of the first inning, getting ready for the Brockton Rocks first ups. Nick O'Brien, the Columbia man, to start the game for Seacoast on the hill. He's joined by Rudy Baez behind the plate. That's his battery mate tonight. O'Brien grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, the Dallas area. Sure, he's a Rangers fan and must be disappointed that you Darvish has been traded yes. to the Los Angeles Dodgers. As we go through the Seacoast fielding lineup, Paul Salada is the first baseman, Jose Negron the second baseman, Kyle Boudry the third baseman, Alex Santos the shortstop, and the, in the outfield, Evan Hirschbaum in left, Christopher Canos in center, and Colin Shapiro in right, Michael Goodrich is the DH, and leading off, for the Brockton Rocks, Aldrich DeJong, his last game here in Brockton. He went three for four in the first leg of the doubleheader. First pitch outside for ball one. Aldrich DeJong here trying to have a big last game here in a Rocks uniform. The 1-0 in there on the outside edge for strike one. DeJong did go to Florida Atlantic. Comes from... Florida area. She slaps that one towards the left side of the infield. Alex Santos gets it and throws it to first base, but won't be in time to catch DeJong. 
It was a great play by Santos there, diving to his right, getting up and making a nice strong throw, but De Jong just too fast. Nice speed there by De Jong there, looking at the replay here. Great speed down the baseline. There is able to get it safe there with a great speed by him. Something the Rocks are gonna miss late in the year. Absolutely, and that'll go in as a base hit, of course. To bring up Joey Silva. Silva was the Futures League All-Star Game MVP this year. So watch the first pitch outside for ball one. Also your cousin. He is, and uh, he got the home run in the All-Star Game to put them up 2-0, the only runs of the game, so good for him. 1-0 count, DeJong the runner on first, the 1-0 is outside for ball two. Silva was two for four in the first game, two singles. Here's the 2-0, it'll be high for ball three. And I know it's early, but are you surprised that DeJong hasn't taken off for second base yet? I'm very surprised with his speed, but with also Joe Silva of a bow also with his speed, that might they might try to get two guys on here for Kyle Simon. Two O's outside for ball four. It's a three O count. Silva is on to first base with a walk, moving DeJong up to second. Didn't need to steal there. Did not need to steal there and potentially there might be a double steal on here is now they're gonna have a mound visit. This early in the game, already in the first inning, as Andy Tarrell did as well. Alonzo Mendoza, pitching coach, Sea Coast, out to talk to Nick O'Brien. He had a tough start for Formella. O'Brien looking like could happen to him as well, of course. No run scored yet. That'll bring up Kyle Simon, who definitely could change that with one swing of the bat. He's a tremendous hitter, one of the best hitters in the Futures League. Of course, he hurt his hand a few weeks ago. We he haven't did. seen a lot of power from him from him since then. And I mentioned that during the first game, Ben, on how he um, hasn't generated much power since that hand injury. So that one's upstairs for ball mm. one, of course. Right when you said that, he did yep. hit a double he to did the hit a left double, center so gap. <laughs> shut me up really quick, but now with more people here, maybe he can't hear me this time. Possible. We do uh, he have probably could still hear me. We do have resonating voices. 1-0 count. Here's the pitch. He'll be downstairs for ball two. DeJong is the runner on second base. Joe Silva the runner on first base with nobody out in a 2-0 Seacoast lead. Kyle Simon up to bat. Two balls, no strikes. Swung on in, missed for strike one. Simon went one for four. He had that double in the first. Grounded to short, struck out swinging, and flew out to left field. He also walked. Now facing a 2-1 count. Fastball from O'Brien just misses the strike zone. It'll be ball three. Matthew Gaetine is the home plate umpire. Tim Rosso, the field umpire. Here's the 3-1. That's low for ball four, and the bases are now loaded for Brockton with nobody out here in the bottom of the first. The Rocks here getting early action here early in this game, just like this morning, or sorry, this afternoon. They're scoring, you said, five runs in the first inning. They scored five in the first, could get four, and Barry goes yard here. Of course, he went yard in the first inning of the first leg, hit a two-run home run, scoring him and Simon on a rocket to right field near KO's Garden. Now with the bases loaded. Here's the first pitch from O'Brien. That's in there, in the bottom half of the strike zone for strike one to Chris Berry. Barry is the DH in the second game here. The 0-1 is hit, fouled on the first base line for strike two.
Base is loaded. Nobody out. 0-2 count to Barry. O'Brien sets. Here's the pitch. That'll be outside for ball one. Here's the one-two pitch. That one's chopped back foul into the protective netting on the rock side of the field. Still two strikes to Barry. Chris Barry here now trying to get on here, trying to get the rocks. Their first runs of the evening. Still a one-two count to Barry with the bases loaded. DeJong mm -hmm. is at third, Silva at second, Simon at first. The one-two, that'll be outside for ball two. Two, two count with nobody out. Nick Garland on deck, followed by Kyle Ruth. Here's the two-two. That's low and outside for ball three, and we'll have a full count for Chris Berry. Full count, bases are full. The two nothing Seacoast Mavericks lead <laughs> here in the bottom of the first inning. Payoff pitch, that's high for ball four and Nick O'Brien nice walks job. in a run. Still no outs here in the bottom of the first. This looks like it could be another long game for us today, Ben. It could, although this time both sides are producing on offense. That'll bring up Nick Garland. Nick Garland was the hero Thursday night as he had a walk-off hit to win in the ninth. Now up with the bases loaded, 2-1 game. He hits that one towards right field, but foul going into the first row of the right field bleachers out of play. Be a long strike. Nick Garland here did not see him in the first game. Let's see how he does here in the second game. Brockton, of course, has the luxury of They do, very two catchers that can play pretty much any single day. The 0-1. Changeup drops in there for strike two. Nick O'Brien still searching for the first out of the game for the Mavericks. And the 0-2, that one's hit down the third baseline, but it'll stay foul. I mentioned how O'Brien is com he, uh, comes from Fort Worth, Texas, in the Dallas area, which is where, of course, the Dallas Mavericks play. They do. Being on the Seacoast Mavericks now, yeah. I wonder if that had anything to do with him. I'm sure it didn't, but it nice coincidence for him. It definitely is a coincidence. We'll have to ask him if he's a basketball fan. <laughs> Still an 0-2 count with nobody out. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch. That one's hit towards second base. It's fielded by Jose Necker, and he throws it to short. They get one out there, but the next throw is overthrown. Here comes Kyle Simon. He'll score. Nice job. And the Rocks have now taken the lead on what could have been a double play. Wouldn't have ended the inning either way. The Rocks now up 3-2. Here's the replay. Nice speed there by Nick Garland getting down the line there, trying to force that bad throw. Throw that hits in the Mavericks dugout there, allows that third run to score, costly run there. It's three to two now after really feeling pretty good about themselves, scoring two runs in the first. And we saw Kyle Simon come home reminiscent of two nights ago against yes. the same Seacoast Mavericks team when he scored the winning run on a play kind of like that, the throw from first base, not in time to get him. That one's shot towards third base, fielded by Boudreaux, throws it to second, gets the first out, throws it to first, and again, the throw is offline. This time the throw from the second baseman, Jose Negron. The Mavericks here are tr having a hard time throwing it as we saw in the first game as well. Multiple times where this was happening. Left 
They did get Garland out. So there are now two outs here in the first inning. So it is a 3-2 to two Brockton lead, and Kyle Peterson is the new batter <laughs> for Brockton. Peterson had himself a good game first half so they check on over Ruthie slides in safely Peterson was three for four three singles also had a walk he scored three times a pair of r r runs batted in first pitch in there on the outside edge for strike one No balls, one strike, two outs. Ruth is the runner at first. 0-1 outside for ball one. The Rocks are now here up 3-2 to two on a gift of an error there. Have to take advantage of it here for the rest of the game. 1-1 one, one count, two men out. Here's the pitch. That one slapped foul towards the sweets, third base line. And Kyle Peterson, who, of course, grew up right here in Brockton, Massachusetts, he's one of the guys that will benefit from Aldrick DeJong heading out. Absolutely. Since he is an outfielder. He can also play DH. Mm -hmm. Playing left field tonight. He'll have some more playing time. 1-2 pitch. It's upstairs for ball two. He started the first game of the season, and then Joe Silva mm -hmm. came in right after that. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ruth on first, 3-2, Rocks lead. That one's inside and low. Ruth takes off for second base. There will be no throw from Baez. Heads up base running there by Kyle Ruth. Getting to second base there in that pass ball. Now, if you watch the replay here, he was off right away when he saw that ball in the dirt. As you mentioned, great heads up. Full count to Peterson with two outs. Call that a super full count. Payoff pitch slapped towards the right side of the infield, diving and making the plays. Negron, he throws to first base, but that won't be in time. A nice play from Negron, but no nothing he could do about that as he had to get back up and then throw the ball. And by that point, Peterson is into first base. If you watch the replay here, Peterson on his horse, running down that first base line. Negron did have to hesitate a moment trying to grab that ball out of his glove. It may have gotten stuck in the webbing. Either way, Peterson on to first base, and Ruth advances to third as we see some more members of the Seacoast bullpen mm -hmm. heading out to go into the bullpen. It's a 3-2 game right now. Because both games we've seen today the Mavericks so far here in this first game have not pitched very well. Olsen swings and misses at the first pitch he sees. Olsen goes to Niagara University, a Mac school, Metro Atlantic. Lives in Janesville, Wisconsin. Any guess what the Niagara mascot is? What is it? It's the Purple Eagle. That's interesting. I feel like it would be like the waterfalls or something yeah. like that because of Niagara Falls. Or like the, do you say the wave you said? The Purple Eagles. The Purple Eagles, I think of the wave or something. Definitely one of the more obscure mascots you'll wow, see. Wow, I have not heard that one, the Purple Eagles. I've heard of like the Golden Eagles. Here's the 0-2. That one's chopped shortly towards the shortstop, Alex Santos. He gets it, throws to first base, and they'll get Olsen in time. That's the third and final out here in the first inning. But the Broughton Rocks, after going down 2-0 in the top of the inning, Get back three runs and now lead three to two after one. Brockton back in the leading team position as they were for the entire first game. Of course, they won that game 18 to four. And uh, interesting note in both game one and game two, five runs were scored in the first inning. It's pretty impressive, just like in the first inning, but only one side scored all the runs. Yeah. Uh, Mike Formula here getting some run support here earlier. Hopefully he's able to calm down in the second inning. And just like in the first game, the Brockton Rocks had eight batters up. 
One away from batting around the order. Due up for the Mavericks. Colin Shapiro, the right fielder, followed by the number nine hitter, Christopher Canos, the center fielder, and then the leadoff man, Jose Negron, will be up for his second at bat of the game. Christopher Canos had quite a game in game one as the nine hitter both times. Hit a home run, his first at bat in the third inning, then tripled in his next at bat. Ended up going two for three as he flew out to right field in his third and final at bat. Now up, Colin Shapiro. Shapiro goes to UMass Amherst, lives in Exeter, New Hampshire. He's playing right field for Seacoast. Formella back out for his second inning of work, and the first pitch from him is downstairs. Ball one. Here's the 1-0. That's in there on the bottom inside corner for strike one. You see a 1-1 one, one count here on the top of the second inning. Slider just misses low for ball two. We'll have a 2-1 count. Here to the eight hitter. 2-1 fastball outside for ball three. Formella obviously gave up two runs in the first inning. Here's the 3-1. That one's chopped foul towards the Seacoast dugout. And if you're Nick Garland, what kind of game plan do you have behind the dish here, Rob, if you're catching Formella trying to make sure that Seacoast doesn't tie this game back up and take the lead again. I think maybe just kind of put in lo put the ball in locations where it's not going to be safe, like basically like that right there. That's that not a good location. So that one's hit familiar. towards left field, gets through Kyle Simon and Jake Rosen for a base hit for Colin Shapiro. Like I feel like Mike Familia has really missed his spots so far today, and that's why that 2-0 two shot, two nothing shot happened there um, and you know you always have to think about as a pitcher where the catcher has the spot is where you got to put it and uh, Mark F Mike Familia so far today has not done that as I've seen it multiple times. Now with a runner on first base no one out Christopher Canos is the batter as I mentioned two for three with a home run and a triple his first at bat the first pitch he fouls it between Garland's legs back to the backstop for strike one. This is a very important game actually between the Rocks and Mavericks as the magic number to win the division for the Brockton Rocks is one and the team that is in seventh place meaning that they're the team that would have the other end of that magic number is the Mavericks. So either way if Brockton wins this game if that pitches outside for ball one Brockton would clinch the Eastern Division. Brockton 28 and 20. Seacoast 22 and 25 on the year. Just a handful of games left. They do here in the Rocks are trying to win today. 1-1 one, one outside for ball two. As you know, after this, they only have two more home games left this season because we had a really long stretch of home games here. This is the conclusion of the seven games and fi in five days stretch here yep. at Campanelli for the Rocks. 2-1 pitch in there, on the outside edge. Strike two. Two-two two count, nobody out. Shapiro, the runner on first. Two, two. That one's hit foul. Back out of the stadium. Still a 2 2 count for Canos. So 
checks on over to the runner at first. Shapiro gets back in safely. Again, a 2-2 count. Kanye has the pitch. Sit towards right field. Joe Silva battling the sun. He takes a step back, catches the ball for the first out. We're going to toss it down to Matt Nelson on the field is with the mayor of Brockton. Matt? We're here with the mayor of our great city, the city of champions, Bill Carpenter, mayor. A big night here, the night out for recovery. Tell us what's going on. I, I just think this is a really special night. We've got a great combination of uh, agencies and organizations that are all uh, involved in the, the battle against addiction. Uh, our champion plan and the Mayor's Overdose uh, Opioid, Opioid Overdose Coalition, along with EB Hope, are some of the primary sponsors. But uh, we've got a lot of folks here that are taking this challenge on. We've got you know people in recovery, people supporting people in recovery, and. And we've got families that have been deeply impacted by this uh, drug addiction crisis. So I just think it's so encouraging uh, that we're out here with a night, a night out for recovery at the ball game. I think it shows that we're finally getting the stigma off of this uh, crisis and that people are willing to come out publicly and work together to take it on. No one's been more vocal about the opioid issue than you. Tell us why it's so important and how it impacts Brockton. Uh, we got to get back to the game. We don't have enough time for all of that. But uh, I mean, obviously, it's very personal. Something we've struggled with within my own family. It's uh, this is what got me into politics at a late age uh, when I first ran for school committee. And I think uh, over the last three and a half years, our administration has made a priority out of us being a leader, and we're being recognized nationally now for our efforts, like the Champion Plan, uh, to proactively try to get people into treatment. Anything you want to add? Uh, it's uh, great to be here at the ball game. Perfect. Thanks, Bill. Right, thanks. Got enough there? Bring it on. Thanks, Matt. Runner on first base for Boudreau. It's outside for ball one. Kyle Boudreau goes to UMass Boston, comes from Medford, Massachusetts. Digs in here. 1-1 one, one count, two outs. Negron, the runner at first base. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Well inside for ball two. Boudreaux grounded out to second base. The first inning is 0 for 1. Kyle Ruth taking care of that. 2-1 pitch is hit up towards DeJong in center field. He's tracking backwards and he'll make the catch nice on the DeJong. move for the third out of the inning. Seacoast gets their leadoff man on with a Shapiro single but unable to do anything with it and the score remains three to two after the top of the second inning. Brockton will be getting their second at bats after this brief break. Nick O'Brien will be out for his second inning of work. We have a t-shirt promotion here. Some free, some free stuff being thrown out into the crowd. Nice uh, promotion here, they're throwing out some red rubber balls, some t-shirts. See a good amount of fans here, especially- As you can see in the dugout there, they're throwing the ball around. And they're hitting it with that lightsaber, of course. It was Star Wars night it was. a few nights ago, and some of the players, especially Skylar Henderson, loved that. Henderson, a big Star Wars Skylar fan Skylar is a big Star Wars fan. I talked to him in the locker room the other day about that, and I brought it up to you as well. He is a big Star Wars fan. We saw him in the in the dugout yesterday. Saber just pretending to be like Darth Vader. Yep. He, and um, in the, in the, his, uh, his teammates, it was very funny. He is, and Skylar's a really nice guy. I talked to him quite a bit in the locker room, and he's a good guy. It's always a so we're now back here in the bottom of the second inning leading off 
for Brockton. Jake Rosen, now of Northeastern, went to Virginia Tech last year. Pitched it up, could be playable, and it is caught by Rudy Baez, the catcher. Tough Good a bat there, there for Nick for Jake Rosen there. Good catch there by Baez as he as he turned his back towards home plate, as you're supposed to do if you're the catcher, as we have mentioned numerous times as we watch the instant replay here. As you can see, play there for the first out. Now up Aldrich DeJong, it's a 1-0 count. DeJong, one for one. Got a single in the first and scored. Pitch high, two. The 2-0. That one slapped hard toward the right side of the infield, but fielded by Negron, who throws it to first base. High throw, but caught by Salada. That'll be the second out of the inning. Almost saw uh, by the Seacoast middle Almost infield. That. That'll bring up Jova. Silva walked and scored in the first inning. Yet to record an official at bat. First pitch from O'Brien. Low outside. Ball one. One O's in the dirt. The ball two. As I mentioned, Silva walks his first at bat. Now has a 2-0 count. I'm sure he'd rather get a hit, r rather swing than walk again. The two O's outside for ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Two men out here in the second inning. 3-0 on the inside edge for strike one. For strike two. We'll have a full count with two outs. 3 balls, 2 strikes, 2 outs, no one on for Joe Silva. That drop there. Breaking ball, I think it fooled Silva wow. there. That definitely fooled him there. Looks like he was sitting on a fastball. Saw him bend his knees. Saw, saw him bend his knees and as a uh, as a batter that's never a good sign. That'll do it here in the second inning. You see the replay here, Silva bent his knees. Yeah, bends expecting his knees. And he knows that he's look. Look at the. the, the That's rough there. But yeah, the Rocks are still leading, three to two here. Three to two. We'll head to the top of the third inning. Mike Formella coming out for his third inning of work. You see KO, the Brockton Rocks mascot, doing his thing up in the stands. The fan takes a selfie with him. Kayo, the kangaroo, fan favorite here in Brockton. And Rob, you actually got to beat Kayo very recently. <laughs> I did, I did, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, you definitely go up to go up to the suites. Uh, I'm glad I didn't scare anybody, though. That was one of my fears. I didn't want to scare any little kids. Possible. A couple of times. Signed some autographs. It was pretty fun. There you go. That's what it's all about here. Collegiate summer ball, you know? It's having fun. You see KO signing a fan's hat. Can you uh, enlighten us as to what the rubber red balls will be used for? I think those are stress balls. Stress balls, really? Yeah, they're stress balls. They um, they usually do that on Mondays, I actually believe. Um, so it's pretty good. And there's a lot, there's a good amount of people.
not look like a lot. That's because most of the people here are up on the concourse. They are up on the concourse, so it's a very crowded stadium here tonight. Now here for the top of the third, Michael Goodrich starting things off. He hits that one towards Rosen at shortstop. He fields it cleanly, throws to first base, and it's in time to Olsen, who makes the catch at first for the first out of the third. I agree, yeah. They can fill in. Um, Tommy O'Hara hasn't seen a lot of time lately. We saw him pretty much all year long being the starting third baseman, playing at first some. Now we're not really not seeing him in the lineup now with Wyatt Olsen emerging as a really good player for the Rocks. Now up, Paul Salata is that first pitch inside for ball one. My first Olsen was before the first game he, he came in here asking someone to change his walk-up song. Yes, remember I do that? remember that. That was pretty funny. One out fouled off for strike one because he uh, he wanted the instrumental version of a song and realized that uh, during batting practice that it was not the instrumental version. He, he was a little... Was that, that, was that one slapped down the right field line, but ranging foul and into the stands for strike two. Was that actually him? There was one player that came in one time that said he didn't want his parents to hear the song. I'm not sure if you remember that at the start of the year. It could have been Wyatt Olsen as well. Hmm. But I remember that very, very vividly. But I remember it being somebody else that no, no, no longer is here for the Rocks. Hmm. Inside for ball two. Paul Salata, the batter, goes to Barry University. Lives in Norwalk, Connecticut. 2-2 two -two outside for ball three. We'll have a full with one down. Third inning, Brockton leading 3-2 to two as we now have the score bug up. That one's hit high into the air, but shallow. Aldrich DeJong ranging in. He'll call it off, and he'll make the play for the second out as Rosen, Ruth, and DeJong are all converging on it. That's a great job there defensively. They're calling them off, making sure they're completely out of the way there. Nice job by Ruth and Rosen there to make sure they're completely out of the way. Now with two outs, Evan Hirschbaum up to bat. Hirschbaum goes to Washington College, comes from Massapequa, New York, where Nick Garland, the Brockton catcher, also grew up. First pitch inside for ball one. Hirschbaum is one for one. Had a base hit in the first inning. Here's the 1-0. That's low and outside for ball two. Tuo is swung and hit hard towards right field. Joe Silva going back, back to the warning track area, and he'll make the play nice on play one there. leg for the third and final out here in the top of the third inning. That one looks like it could be dangerous, but Silva making the play just about a step in front of the warning track as we watch the replay here. Nice job there by Joe Silva going almost back to the warning track there. Nice catch there for the third out. will welcome a singer on. God bless singing God Bless America here. Middle of the third. Excellent rendition of God Bless America there. Wearing a colorful American flag shirt. 
Very nice. On this beautiful summer evening <laughs> here in Brockton. Nick O'Brien back up for his third inning. Do up for the Rocks, Kyle Simon, Chris Berry, and Nick Garland. You see Simon and Berry timing O'Brien's pitches in the on deck circle. down from Baez, which means we'll be starting the bottom of the third inning momentarily. And leading things off for the Rocks, Kyle Simon. Simon playing third base tonight, normally the first baseman, although yep. sometimes we've seen him DH as well. Also not the first time he's played third especially recently. Simon walked and scored in the first inning. First pitch is low for ball one. So we see a somewhat windy day. It is. Starting the wind starting to pick up here. 1-0 is swung on and mm -hmm. missed for strike one. Simon Goes to Palm Beach Atlantic. Comes from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Now faces a 1-1 one, one